you know, the really annoying thing is I've got a pink wig somewhere. Just don't know where the heck it is. So, last episode of the fifth season of Black Mirror. Man, I wish these were longer, but I'll tell you what I can get. Rachel, Jack, and Ashley too. This, this was an interesting one. Now, I don't, I didn't dig too much into overall reactions, but just the soft vibe I get was that people seem to think the least of this one. Um, for this season of Black Mirror. Um, again, I could be wrong because, like, that was just a vague whiff I got. So I don't know. If that is the case, I can see why. Relative to how Black Mirror can be, it's a little bit, for lack of a better word, cheesy. Um, although for me, it was kind of cheesy in a good way. Um, and I also don't know if there's Miley Cyrus bite back. Um, she's fine in the part. She does pretty well. There's actually some parts of it I, th I thought she did great, even. But I don't know. I had a lot of fun with this. It's not the best one of the season. Striking Vipers is the best one of the season. By actually a pretty big margin. And while I'm not going to go so far as to say that this is a better, like, made and executed product than Smithereens was... I enjoyed it more than Smithereens. I would personally rank it higher. Although, I mean, depending on what you like out of your Black Mirror, I think most people would probably put Smithereens above this. But I really had a lot of fun with this. So, I, I what I will admit, and what I will cop to, uh, is that the first 20 minutes, half hour-ish, they were painful for me. Because it was dealing with... I mean, it was cringy. And, and like, when I use that word, first of all, realize I will never mean it in a positive light because I hate entertainment that makes me cringe, that makes me embarrassed for somebody. I don't enjoy that at all. Now, normally when I bring that up, it's in relation to humor. In this case, it's not humor, but it's still humiliation, and I hate it. And I'm kind of supposed to, but like one of the natures of cringy things is you see it coming from a mile away. You just have to watch it unfold and oh, it hurts. So when I say cringy, I, I, I pretty much never mean it as a positive. And also it's, like I said, it's always painful for me to, to try and watch something that I find cringy. That said... It was foundational work for where the story and the characters were going. So I get why it's there. It wasn't gratuitous. And because the episode shed that stuff in order to hit the back end um, and do something else, I'm prepared to forgive it. That said, those first 20, 25 minutes were still rough. They were hard for me to watch this young girl, to watch Rachel feel outside of her life to not feel connected to the school that she's now in, to not feel connected to her sister, to not feel connected to her father, and to take solace in this bubblegum pop. And I don't find that amusing because I don't find that something that I'd ever mock somebody for. Whatever you find solace in, take solace in it. As long as it's not something that actually hurts anybody, take solace in whatever you need to. So I was really worried that the, even if I, I never expected the show itself to treat it as, as a point of mockery, but to see other people or characters possibly treat it that way, that really had my hackles up. The, the talent show, I, I am going to just talk spoilers on this thing pretty quickly, I think. Um, yeah, I think more than, than the other ones. I'm, ju I'm just going to roll through it because most of the non-spoiler stuff is the stuff that I'm going to complain about. Um, so, you know, that, that whole talent show scene, that was painful. That, I'm like, that, like, I had to pause and walk away and then come back and finish it. It hurt. It hurt a lot. But it never felt like it was dialing it up just for the sake of being more humiliating. It was just managing to hold on to a level of believability with it. I also kind of like the little touch that the father 
is like a very blue collar guy and he's just he's trying to literally build a better mousetrap but like we're at this near future point where even like a guy who's doing pest control has this crazy tech setup in his basement and is messing around with like the the this artificial brain and these ai algorithms i kind of find him i found that surprisingly amusing um but let, let's talk about Ashley and Ashley 2. So Ashley 2 being the little robot, the doll, basically, that has been um, input with the uh, personality selectively of the performer, Ashley O, which is Miley Cyrus's character. Now, first of all, I there's a lot of little subtle things about Ashley 2 and its movements that I really appreciate. I also like the little sort of cycling in the eyes when it's processing something that was said to it. It's basically like a buffering. I like that. That's a cool little touch. I mean, it's totally the sort of thing that, that tech companies would build into something like that. It's like, you gotta, you know, if it has to pause, you have to be sure the user knows it didn't freeze. It's thinking, just wait, and then it talks. Um, but when, <laughs> when they, when they take the inhibitors off and it get proper spoilers now, and it gets revealed that like, it wasn't that partial personality from Ashley uploaded into this thing. It was, I mean, it would have been comparing to other, uh, episodes of, um, Black Mirror, basically would have been her cookie, uh, getting uploaded into this thing, but then being restricted to uh, only positive stuff, you know, very limited responses. So it's not that far off like from the monkey from um, Black Museum. It's a little bit more sophisticated than that, but it's not too far off from that. So when the limiters get taken off, she just starts swearing up a storm and is so ticked off at everything he's like fine you can't help me and she's trying to storm out can somebody open this door for me like oh god i really i love ashley i mean like ashley oh the human version she was good she was fine uh miley cyrus played her fairly well i will actually grant that i'm not sure that even though miley cyrus played the part fine i'm not sure that it was actually beneficial to cast her because given her own status as a pop star, it does come across as a little bit self-indulgent sort of, oh, look how hard it is to be rich and famous. And like, I try not to pull that with people because everybody suffers. And like, that's the human condition. Everyone is in pain. It doesn't matter what they have and how much quote unquote better on paper their life is than yours. They're still in pain. So like, I get that, but for so somehow having a real life pop star do that makes it feel a little bit more self-indulgent and almost like instead of being asked to sympathize with this character, you're asking us to sympathize with Miley Cyrus as a person. And I, I don't think that's actually what the show was trying to do, but unfortunately that becomes a little bit of a vibe off of it. And again, I'm not saying she's bad in the part. I actually think she's pretty good in the part. I'm just not sure that they should have gotten a real pop star. Uh, is kind of all I'm saying, but, um, but she does, she does pretty well. The, the aunt is delightfully hateable. Uh, seeing her get her comeuppance was, was quite satisfying. Uh, and I, I liked, I liked the relationship between the sisters. It's funny. I, I don't often connect, uh, excessively with sibling relationships in entertainment because, well, probably partly because I'm an only child. So my point of reference for sibling relationships is limited. It's secondhand. It's circumstantial. Uh, I, I never, I didn't have siblings growing up, so that's not my life. That's not my experience. But from what I have seen and having, you know, been around and known and seen plenty of siblings and, you know, uh, having had those kinds of interactions in my life, it did ring very true for me the way in which the older sister, Jack, you know, was very, oh, you're so dumb. Why do you like this music? But when she truly saw that Rachel was in legitimate pain, that she was trying to help. Not necessarily by doing what Rachel would want her to do, but, you know, by taking actions, she's like, this is what'll help. And 
you know, out, out of genuine concern, but still, you know, being very frustrated because like I, even though not in a sibling way, I can relate to the family thing of, I love you, but I don't like you right now. So it's, uh, the, I, I thought that was pretty well captured. The dad was like maybe a little too absent, but given what the sisters were going to have to be able to get away with doing as the story progressed, I guess he kind of had to be, but it was a little like, uh, I don't know. Did, did they doofus him up just a touch too much? I feel like they did. I don't know. Um, but overall it was pretty good. Like I said, nicely cathartic as well. And this actually, boy, this makes a series where it's two out of three episodes, I would say have a happy ending. Hey, 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 Charlie, are you okay? It, like, I know this is weird that like, I, and when I say Charlie, I'm talking about Charlie Brooker, the guy who writes Black Mirror. And I'm asking if he's okay when he's writing more stuff that's like kind of happy. You all right, dude? You sure? Okay. I'm not actually complaining because a lot of my favorite, I mean, well, my all-time favorite episode of Black Mirror is one of the happy ones. And I really liked Striking Vipers. And I had a lot of fun with this. So while I never really want it to become the norm with Black Mirror, if, if, you, if he's finding that he wants to end on a slightly more upbeat note these days, I'm not exactly complaining. I had fun with this. And if anyone's curious, my ranking for this season, because um, I have ranked, well, prior to um, Bandersnatch coming out, I ranked all the episodes that had aired up to that point, uh, which was 18 at the time. Now there's 22 total. Uh, I mean, if people care, I guess I could refresh a ranking of, of all the episodes. I don't know if I will, though. We'll see. I'm actually recording this before even the first episode of my reviewing this season, you know, drops. So I have no idea what the response is. I, like, Black Mirror's done pretty well for me in the past. I just I just don't know if people will still come to me for it. So we'll see. Uh, people want me to redo that ranking with this new season and Bandersnatch worked in. I'll, I mean, I'll consider it based off response. But for right now, let's wrap it up there. Rachel, Jack, and Ashley 2. What did you think about it? Yeah, so, so, you know what it was that I felt like in a lot of ways, Ashley 2 was saying in English the kind of stuff that I tend to imagine BB-8 and R2-D2 say. You know, that level of swearing. I just wanted to share that. But whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about a whole bunch of stuff to do because there's buttons, links. You can help me out on Patreon. There's links to merch. There's social media stuff. All sorts of things. Check them out down below. Or don't. I appreciate it, but you don't have to, because at the end of the day, you are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.